Hey everybody, Dave Basilto here for PremierProUser.com. And today we're in Premiere Pro CS5. We're going to take a look at the dynamic link feature in Premiere Pro. Uh, in the actually production studio. It is fantastic, a huge time saver. Once you learn how to use it, uh, it will be just a huge part of your workflow. And it's one of the biggest reasons why I'm just a fanatic about uh, the Adobe Production Suite CS5. Uh, so we've got, I've got three clips here in my timeline. These are Canon 5D clips and we're playing them natively in the timeline. And let me just click on my timeline and if I play, you see we've got some really cool clips and he's yelling at his friend who just told him he needs him to blow up the outside and now we're going to blow up the outside and that's my short film that I plan on winning a ton of awards in uh, film festivals. So uh, let's say this first area here, this first clip, I, wanted, I, I think it's just going to really hit it if I have it as a cartoon look. So all I need to do is select that clip, right click, and go replace with After Effects Composition. And that's going to bring up Adobe After Effects. I'm going to call this uh, Cartoon Effect clip okay and you can save it wherever you'd like to if I press save it opens it up in Adobe After Effects and it creates um, its uh, composition right for you right right away so cool stuff here's my clip so now I just need to go in and look for a cartoon and there's cartoon and I'm gonna drag that on and now we have this cartoon look and I think it may be a little more um, threshold on the lines and some more width. And uh, that's the look I'm going for. I think it's a winner. All I need to do now is choose File, Save. Go back into Premiere Pro. As you see, my clip says Premiere Linked now. And over here, I have a linked composition. It's called Cartoon Effect. If I actually slide this over a little bit cartoon effect clip. So now I know exactly what that is if I ever need to go back in and fix it. In my uh, viewer here, you see I have my cartoon effect applied. So what's so great about this? Well, I'm done editing my movie. I want to go into After Effects and add some effects. And uh, it's just there. It's simple to use. But let's say um, I think I need more contrast here. I can also just go into my video effects here in color correction and just drag on uh, brightness and contrast and go into my effects controls and here's my brightness and contrast so I'm going to brighten that up a little bit well 40% is pretty high and I'm going to add a little contrast and now I've got a different uh, totally different look so that's my original footage and I boosted up some contrast very cool so I don't need to go back into After Effects after this to do other things. I can continually add stuff from my Premiere Pro timeline, our effects panel. Um, so huge, uh, you know, and then now I can also just render this out. I don't have to render in After Effects. I'm done. Um, I can render out from Premiere Pro, which is fantastic. I can also take this all into Encore and, uh, and make a movie out of it, a DVD. Um, and actually I'm doing a, uh, tutorial for that because one of you asked for that. So let's go to this next footage. Um, actually let's go to the last footage and, uh, last clip I should say. And now I want to add, uh, like a lower thirds for some god awful reason. So I'm going to import my desktop. I have this thing called dynamic PSD and it's a Photoshop file. It's a, it's just a, uh, lower thirds I created in Photoshop. And Photoshop's uh, uh, Premiere is asking me, do I want to bring this in as merged layers, uh, merge all layers, merge layers, individual layers, or sequence? So for now, I'm going to choose merge all layers. Click OK. Here is my Photoshop document. And I bring that in, and there it is. Simple. Now, what's so good about this? I can also go right click and go edit in Photoshop and change colors, change the text, whatever I want to do, I can do that. Um, it's, in, it's in an update in Premiere Pro in real time. So very cool dynamic linking. Um, now let's look at the other option. Let me get this out of the timeline. I'm going to 
uh, bring in that dynamic PSD again. And instead of merged all layers, I'm going to choose individual layers. And it's uh, going to allow me to choose which layers I want. I want both of them. I'm going to click that. It brings it in as a folder. And now I've got both layers. What's so good about that? Now I can animate them. So I'll bring in the bottom. And I'll bring in the text. Okay. Now if I click on the text and I go into the effects controls and I go back to frame one where the text begins, uh, go down to motion and let's say I want it to go from left to right. So I'm going to drag my position icon over, set a keyframe and you know you have a keyframe when you have a little diamond and I'm going to go a few frames ahead and drag it back on. Now when I go back here and press the space bar, you see it zooms on. And one more time. Zooms on. So awesome stuff with the dynamic link ability in um, Premiere Pro in the production suite. Going in and out of After Effects. Going in and out of Photoshop. Um, I can also, and this is a separate tutorial I'm doing for you guys later. If I go down, uh, maybe I want this uh, explosion to just be much louder. Or I want to add some... I don't know, reverb or who knows what. I can go click on the audio or actually the whole clip, right click and go edit in Adobe Sound Booth. So now I can go in and do a ton of audio fixes or effects, whatever. Have that all done in Sound Booth, which is a great uh, audio program. And when I click save in Sound Booth, it's going to bring it back into Premiere Pro, all, uh, all done, and I'm going to have it ready to go. It's part of the dynamic link. Awesome stuff. This is why Premiere Pro is, uh, and the production suite CS5 is a tremendous asset and tool for you to have in your toolbox. I'm Dave Basulto. Check out a 30-day trial at the link below. Uh, enjoy your weekend, and we'll see you soon.